It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are about to have to play Blind Justice here. Um, I think I, when I chosen the number of players that would be filling it up, we have to do a little bit of career stuff before we get jump into the game. Um, I think I looked online to see number of players, because it doesn't say in the box how many players, three or more, so that's, there's no limit to that. That's because it's, it's kind of a party game and you can have teams, but the game comes with only four pawns. But when I looked online, it said uh, three to six. So I thought six. Um, I'm gonna, and I think you could play with six. You just get a couple other pawns down there. I don't think it really matters too much. But um, I'm gonna just play with four. And the reason being, I, I think it's gonna be one of those games that's just kind of like a lot of head talking maybe, or, or maybe tedious. I don't know, playing a party game by yourself is not that much of a party. Oh, can't be, we'll see. We'll see how this works. It should be, I, I, I'm going to be hopeful. So what that meant is uh, both Curly and Flush had to be moved off this list. They picked other um, college occupations. Curly is going to be an engineer, and Flush moved to the biologist. So that, that fills up our biology track. So right after this lawyer track, maybe we'll do a careers just to resolve their, their, um, career stuff, and then go right on to the biology game for our biology majors. Okay, so here we have our lawyers-to-be gathered around Blind Justice. How do you play Blind Justice? Well, you start on this space, you roll a die, you move a number of spaces, and then you do something based on the space you go on. Um, you're trying to get money, you're trying to get enough money to be a lawyer before the Supreme Court, I guess. Money kind of equals prestige in this world of blind justice. Um, so there's three different levels you're gonna be going around. You go around on the outside first until you get to 300,000. Then if you land on one of these spaces that has an arrow going to the next level, you can do that. Until you get three million, then you have to land on an arrow that gets you into here. And that is what you do. So what do you do on these spaces? Well, most of the spaces are jury spaces, and that's kind of the party aspect of the game. When you land on a jury space, you're going to draw a card, and you can embellish on this. On, there's a, so the, the card details a, a case, a real life case. These are all civil suits. Um, and so you can, we're gonna play, they just read it, because I'm not gonna get into the creative aspects of each of these players, uh, though maybe. Maybe I'll think about how persuasive they might be. And um, this this is the amount that they're, the plaintiff is suing for. That's not red. That's, the other people don't know that. So the other people, so say it was Tater landed here, the other people would then discuss how much they think the person should get uh, or if they should get nothing. Um, now, Tater has two choices after they render their verdict. Now, if they disagree, by the way, whoever offers the least amount that's how much it is. So if, if, if these two of them say it should be 150,000 and one of them says they should get nothing, then the, the plaintiff gets nothing. Now, in that case, Tater would probably want to appeal it. The, the, then she has to pay the appeal costs there. And then the actual verdict is looked up in this book. And if um, the actual verdict is greater than the amount that they offered, then she gets her appeal cost back, she gets that amount of money instead, and then she gets to take another turn. And that's most of the game, it seems like. Of course, I haven't played it, but I, can, I, I think I can make a fair guess. Then we have these settle spaces here. Those, you roll a die. You, you pick another player to be the defendant. You roll a die, and if it's even, that player has to pay you um, whatever the money amount is times the number you rolled. If it's odd, then you don't, they don't have to pay you anything. And then if you're successful on a settle space, you get to take another turn. Then we have these pitfall windfall spaces, which are kind of one of the few indicators that there was some change of mind as the production of this game went along. They're called pitfall windfall spaces here, but the cards are, that they reference are chan called chance cards. Um, and so there, there you see a difference. Another difference is some of these district court cards have this color back which it seems like that's probably what they want to go for, but most of them ended up being red. So you'll see some that are brown, um, but don't, don't panic. They're the same as the red ones. I mean, they have different cases, but there's no, no other difference that I can tell at this point. 
Just to help me remember, let's go through Peace Color. Tater is going to be black. Jules is going to be green. Up with people. Pinky is going to be blue. She's a little sad there's no red or pink in here. And Watermelon is going to be brown. Tater's going first. She rolls a one. And now we'll get to see how this works. So, draw one of these cards. Close Dancing. This female law student alleges she was the subject of unfair hiring and firing practices and sex discrimination. While still a student, she and a male classmate were working for a large electrical firm. They were doing the same job, but she was earning 6000 a year less. Her supervisor fired her after she dressed in an inappropriate manner and had been observed dancing with a fellow employee on the trip. She filed a suit against the corporation for sex discrimination. So this is what she's suing for. Um, the others, oh, that was one thing I forgot. If their, if their verdict is less than fifty dollars to $100,000 and Tater appeals, then, then she gets this amount. All right. All right, our jury found in favor of the plaintiff for the sum of $60,000. This was hard for me to do. I, for one, okay, this game is older, right? When is it published? Probably in the 80s at some point. These real people, they're, they're from the 90s, like 1990, and I don't have information like how much money this person would have made a year at her job and how long was she out of work as a result of the firing. They all thought that she shouldn't have been fired, and they all thought that um, she should have been paid the same amount as her male colleague, but um, it's difficult to put a number on that. So I did a little randomizing, looking at the verdict book as just kind of scanning it for an idea as to what sort of ballpark we're looking at. Um, so I rolled a die and they just, they went for 60,000. It's not real, it's gonna be hard to play this game in, in a pure way, um, yeah, which is obvious. But so now I have to decide, or Tater has to decide whether or not she wants to appeal. Now if we look at her card, they were actually going for 50 to 100,000. That's in the range. They could actually get more than that it could be more than that or it could be less. Um, thing is, we don't look it up. Ah, hold on. All right, I think she'll just take the money. Um, 60000 isn't bad. So it's kind of, I mean, it's not a very true to the subject matter, but she gets all the money from the, the payout rather than the, the poor um, electrical worker or whatever. Um, all right, so now Jules up with people. One, two, three, four, five. And we have a new case, and this one is going to be wash and tear. Nurses like things to be kept clean. The plaintiff was carefully washing her glass baking dish when it broke in her hand. It lacerated the tendon on her little finger. Two operations were required to repair the damage. She is suing the manufacturer for failing to warn of the dangers of breakage. The defendant stated that the plaintiff was contributor... Uh, contributorily uh, contributor negligent in causing the break. Hmm. All right, our jury found for the defendant. Um, Jules is going to appeal. The appeal cost doesn't seem too high, so she has to pay $10,000. I'll, I'll give her a change later. And we're going to look at the case number 164. And we get 90000 Wow. So she's going to get... Um, it was, now is it if it's higher than what the jury says or higher than that does she get to? Okay, read the rules. Yeah, so she's gonna get um, her appeals costs refunded and she's gonna get to go again. It's been pretty shoddy glassware. All right, uh, so we'll just let her roll again. I'll figure out the money later. It's hard to. I'm, I'm right-handed, and I used that hand for the one, two, three. Okay, settlement. So Jules is going to just pick, I guess, Tater, because Tater has the most money other than her, and we're going to do the settlement. So if it's odds, Tater's fine. If it's even, Jules gets money from Tater and gets to roll again. All right, it's odds, so Tater is fine, and we'll go on to Pinky. One for Pinky. So she's going to share a space with Tater as in top, and they can chat over this next case. 
Now he looks the part. Ice hockey players expect to be hit by their opponents, but not their coaches. The team coach threw out a puck to begin the practice, but accidentally hit a 16-year-old player in the mouth. His tooth was knocked out, and he will require peri- peri- uh, periodontal replacement. He sued the city for the negligent action of its employee. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying not to look at the, re- the award, because it... All right. I think, well, yeah, one of them is going to find for the defense. And the appeal cost is really cheap, so Pinky's going to go ahead and do it. It seems like there's kind of an incentive not to find for the defense, but I'm not going to overthink the game. She's going to appeal. And case number is 136. Eh. 50,000. So she gets 50,000 and she gets to go again. I guess I, in hockey, do you normally throw a puck in the air? That, that would probably, if people had a different grasp of hockey, they would probably think differently. But someone reasoned that, you know, you're doing sports, you're going to have to, two, three, four, five, six, expect that sort of thing would happen. All right, Chance, this is our first one. District Court. Television ads bring in lots of extra DWI and worksman compensation cases. Collect 30000 in easy money from the clerk. All right, pretty good turn for Pinky so far. Watermelon's first turn. After this, I'm not going to do every single turn. Um, I might just like alternate people. So on one round of turns, I'll do one person on each round of turns. All right. One, two. Jury. Another big case. Breaking up is hard to do. The BYOB party at the local hall was drawing to a close when a fight broke out. The plaintiff became involved when the fighting continued outside. He testified that in attempting to break up the fight, he was kicked in the foot by a security guard. The orthopedic surgeon verified that only a very hard blow could have caused the broken bone and dislocated ankle. The defendant argues that he pulled the plaintiff off another brawler, but never kicked him. A defense witness confirmed his story. Ooh, there's a witness. That's going to make it interesting. All right, again, since it only takes one person to find for the defense in order for it to, the ruling to go towards the defense, our jury went that route, even though the game seems to disincent- disincentivize it. Um, Watermelon's appealing for 15000 and we're going to, this is case number nine. This is one of the first cases ever to enter the legal system. 100000 so once again, that is paying off. Watermelon rolls again, two. And here is her thing. There's a stop sign on it. This was not fully punched when I got it. All right. Delay. You've just won a hundred, a million dollar judgment, but the defense is appealing. Pay legal costs of a hundred thousand to the clerk every time you pass recess, or abandon the case and discard this card. Collect one million from the clerk only if you land on recess. Ooh, interesting. So. It's kind of a push your luck sort of thing. Um, I guess she'll keep it for now. Let's look at our scores. We have 150,000 for watermelon, 150,000 for pinky, 140,000 for jewels, and 160,000 for tater as in tot. So pretty close game so far. So this turn we're gonna focus on tater she rolls a six and one, two, three, four, five, six. Another one of these pitfalls, and this time it's a can. Money talks. You may appeal any district court verdict book decision of your case by paying double the appeal cost. You win on an even die roll, an amount equal to the appeals cost times the die roll. Oh, so she can do this instead of using the book, I guess. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Just make it a gamble. All right, Pinky had a very good round. She's at 450 plus thousand right now. She, if she lands on one of these spaces with the arrows, she can move up to superior court. Um, 
yeah. There was, uh, it's, people just keep appealing even when a, a, a money award happens. Watermelon didn't actually on her last one. She was satisfied with the ruling of the jury. But there's been fewer, um, f uh, fewer findings for the defendant. It's tricky uh, to know whether, how much they should try to game the game and how much they should just do what they think is actually a good answer. They've been playing it the latter way, but I could see how you could play this game and kind of find an ideal amount to try and guess, guess the kind of lowest possible amount so that um, the people aren't incentivized to appeal. Because if you appeal, you get another turn as well, if you appeal successfully. So it's kind of, it's. I think if you're playing this gamily, you can kind of play it two different ways. If you're playing it gamily, you can, um, sorry, there's talking in the background, hold on. Sorry, I'm very distractible today and there's lots of talking. Sometimes it makes it hard for me to focus. But what I was trying to get across is that if you play, you, you can kind of play the game two ways. You can either play it gamily, where you try to kind of hit the sweet spot with your amount so that they get as little as possible, but are yet disincentivized to appeal. And you do that by kind of getting a feel for the cases and I guess in a way the legal system, and maybe that's a way that lawyers might do it is try to, you know, get the, get the rights. Jurors wouldn't do that, but maybe more the defendant. Maybe it's a case of like the jurors in this are more kind of like settling out of court. So they want to do, they want to, you know, concede enough so that the person doesn't keep pressing the case, because if they press the case, they can do better, likely, or possibly, but not so much. Um, but again, you don't want to go too low, because then if they appeal and they get higher than that, that's when they get their court fees back and they get to go again. So it's tricky. Or you can do it just like as a juror, like put yourself in a juror seat and just kind of give the reward that you think uh, people should get and so far I've been doing it the latter way But it might be as the players get more feel of the game Some of them might start to game the game more than others. We'll see uh, next time on the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament blind justice, this is um, Lawyer track. It's the only lawyer track we're gonna do so I don't even have to number it just lawyer track period